This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 641 and a half. Tuesdays, we've been celebrating professional eyes wrestling here. Uh, this is Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. A special edition, because we cannot be live, because you guys should be out voting. And, and to help you go vote, you're not going to worry about going to see Wrestling Mayhem Show live. Also, uh, Sorgatron Media, Psychic Media Service may also be involved with an election night coverage uh, live spot with uh, Pittsburgh Current and the Incline here locally. Uh, so go please check uh, uh, out uh, Pittsburgh Current to see what's going on there, what I will be involved in behind the scenes. But in the meantime, we're going to talk professional wrestling. I'm not going to leave you without your dose of professional wrestling. So with me to help out on the special um time um displaced version of the wrestling mayhem show is from poughkeepsie new york he is the only mayhemer with a future endeavored letter from the wwe and a brand new fancy hand haircut he is mad fucking mike oh you threw in the fucking sorg this haircut must be working i've done too much today to give a shit about my language <laughs> also with us because it's a very special time displaced we grabbed him from the time stream into our TARDIS of a studio, and Larry has rejoined us here on the studio. Um, um, you've never watched Doctor Who, have you? I no. do get the reference, though. The phone booth. Thank you. Yeah. Bigger on the inside. Just say the phone booth. <laughs> no, because if I say bo- phone booth and time traveled, you could be thinking Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but probably not because you're far too young for that. No, I remember that. Oh, good. But I, wish, I, wish I, was a, spots, I wish I was. wish there was a TARDIS that could have jumped in. Oh, there, there you go. There, Mike's yeah, got the visuals yeah, yeah. for you. I wish I could have jumped into that. <laughs> It's a lady I think we're doing the theme song. I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyways, this is the Mayhem Show. We're going to get to some stuff. Uh, in the meantime, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links to uh, and subscribe to us in podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform. If we're not there, holy shit, let us know and we'll fix it. Uh, also, you can drop us an email at that email address. Good time. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com or 412-206-WMS0 at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page and group. Join the group especially. That's where a lot of comments happen. A lot of fun happens. A lot of conversation with all of you guys in the Mayhem Nation. And thank you to our Patreon supporters. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Our fan of the show, $1 level. Bo diggity! Woo! Woo! Ed Burke, Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment. Occupy Pro Wrestling, Christopher Bishop, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast all round up the Pocky Club $5 level and Billy Johnson. Billy Effin Johnson at the Pizza Club $10 level. Thank you so much, you guys, for being part of the show and also thank you to our streaming partner the 405 media.com over on the west coast that's been um supporting the show there and they carry us at 9 p.m uh pacific time midnight eastern over there uh so you can fall asleep to the sweet sounds of mayhem so there's no producer missing no, no, she's, he's looking. He's looking. We're no, she's not there. You, you are correct. There's flying not without a, a net. It's all right. And there won't be for several weeks because she's going to California. Uh, so on, on assignment. On assignment. Yes, on assignment. She's so going to discover, is there Northern California wrestling? And is it worthwhile? Um, and do we make new friends? Uh, so there's that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Mad Mike, we Hi. had a thing happen where you started returning to something oh no 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 how no, did no. I, but how did re, re, can we just can we just call yeah. it what it is what it's a relapse you relapse into impact wrestling no this is a protest there's a protest it's a protest uh, 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 for, uh, catch us you up because i can't about the yeah. episode of simpsons where homer went on a hunger strike no, i i don't because there's he, been he like deprived, he deprived himself he chained himself to a pole and he didn't eat for days 
Basically, that's what I did because I sat down for two hours and watched Impact Wrestling. That, that is not what you did. You did the equivalent of ODing on heroin to protest no. wrestling. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Wow, I, don't know if, I don't know if I'd go I that don't, far. Yeah, I know. I want to underground this Impact. So. Okay. Oof. So, 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 Mike, was, was, uh-huh. anyways, explain why were you watching Impact? Cleanly. Um, because I don't like the other option I was given to watch this weekend. <laughs> okay, there was a show. We uh, may not. There um, was something that happened that I don't categorically. We may have decided agree. not to uh, I, uh, discuss a show, and, and it's probably worthwhile that we didn't. So yeah, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. No, no, I have no idea. Yeah, and since I don't really have like, it, if it were this upcoming weekend i have a show i'm going to which i'm very excited about Yay. but um it, it was a form of protest like okay wrestling at the end of the week no not 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 that one i'm gonna no. watch something on thursday listen listen i just i'm just gonna protest any wrestling on a friday afternoon at this point all right i, I see i'm not even opposed to that mm. saturday morning were we okay with that, that? saturday but, morning. yeah it's it's just when and where and what and why and how. Mm. Yeah, that, that's all I oppose. Anyways, to. because of these reasons that we are not discussing, go go watch John all over the last couple of weeks. Um, oh, go watch it in yeah. general and vote because that's why we're doing this. So you guys can vote and don't have this in the way. Listen to us on the way the polls. Introduce your neighbor at the this poll to the Wrestling Mayhem line. Show. What? Listen to us in line at the polls. Yes. 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 But what the hell are we saying? You watched Impact Wrestling because of these reasons. I did. Um, there's a lot of lucha in my impact. Yeah, like sprinkled in there. It's sprinkled. Yeah, I don't know if does that numb it I down. Mean, a little you can bit? throw bacon in a turd sandwich. Oh, don't talk about. You're bacon still going to be stuff. eating shit. I. Uh, by the way, I just gave I just gave Larry a a candy bar that I found at Bob Evans, not brutal Bob Evans, the, the restaurant. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That place is pretty v- brutal too. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah maybe later um but it was it was a it was called what was it it's like the i don't i forget what it was called but it was it like said the, it had bacon and potato chips in it but what it tasted like is somebody sprinkled <laughs> dog food into a candy bar yep yep okay i was I'm curious so, i felt ashamed impact review. i, I felt <laughs> that's your impact review <laughs> i felt ashamed <laughs> i felt ashamed i still have the rest of the candy yeah, bar to eat. i mean um we had willie mack versus rich swan uh-huh <laughs> Was objectively a very good match. I don't know if I necessarily like Rich Swan being employed, but mm-hmm. <laughs> so I mean, you know, <laughs> well, there's a country you could have had a show in. Yeah, it was a good match. You and, should be working I, on Fridays. It's Willie Mac. I'm I'm going to enjoy a Willie Mac match just because that's how I'm wired. Because I he I feel like he's representative of me. I don't know. Why. <laughs> you yeah uh, yeah okay I, I'll, I'll take yeah. that yeah yeah I mean come on. He is. Let, let's be fair. And we also had Taya versus Tessa Blanchard. Hi. Great match. Loved it. DQ ending, which, again, it's impact. I should have expected it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, those are my only real positives. <laughs> um, really? Storytelling is still very troubling. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't care at all about anything to do with LAX or the OGs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure the OGs are just Lucha DX at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. Like, one of them can probably still go, is bald, wears a bandana, and doesn't look as good as he did, but he can still go. The <laughs> other one just needs to go the fuck away. Wait, wait, so who is, who is LAX or uh, the OGs right now? Honestly, I couldn't even tell because they don't they don't reference each other by name. They're just the OGs. I just knew one of them was LAX and one of them was the OGs, which is really funny because the OGs did not have Conan in it. Okay, all right. Conan to me is the oest of G's. <laughs> you just broke sword. <laughs> The AM show at midnight was probably not a good idea. Uh, <laughs> it's a great idea. 
Oh. By the way, title title for the episode, Sorg? The, the Oest, Oest of G's. Of G's. Yes, I'm, thinking, I'm making a note right now since we have no producer. The, the Oest of G's. The Oest. <laughs> How did I spell O-S? O, capital O, lowercase I-S-T. E-S-T. I think there's a possibly in there. I have a dash in there. The Oest of G's. I'll, I'll figure uh, it out. I'll figure it out. That's okay. not going to be very Googleable, but okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, I mean, was there any like OVEs being caught out in the chat room? Uh, oh, anything like God. that? I don't care about Ohio. Wow. Oh, do well, not give a flying fuck about Ohio. Because it's, Ohio is not calling someone to 1970s New York, it's fucking Ohio. What? Calling Brian Cage there is not a threat, it's just saying, hey, do you like the? Do you, would you want to see Canton? <laughs> what? Wait, 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 wait! What happened? What, what, tell me what happened on the show. Like Brian, I thought you watched Impact. No, I, did, I have. I'm behind on You're everything. Behind on everything. I'm, bar- I'm barely watching WWE. I watched SmackDown yeah. today. SmackDown's good. Yeah, it was. Then I watched the pay- the pay per view <laughs> that preceded that. Well, that was your it. own damn fault. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was just like a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah. Well, Alex, I, I know it's Hernandez King in Homicide. I don't know who the fuck King is. Oh, that's Eddie Kingston. He, he, no, it's not Kenny King. Okay, no, it's it, no, it's Eddie Kingston. That's Eddie Kingston. I believe so. Because they, they, they were just calling him King. Yes. Jesus, he looks like hell. <laughs> He's, I think, with Mia Yim. Didn't fucking recognize him at all. Yeah. That's not good for him. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Eddie Kingston. No, Eddie Eddie Kingston has crashed into me before at a at a uh Chikara show. Mm-hmm. Like I I've, I've gotten very up close and personal. Dude, he's been Eddie around Kingston. for a while. He used to do IWC like 10 years ago. Well, yeah. more than 10 like, years ago. I did not recognize him at all. We once <laughs> mistook a, a fellow that looked like Eddie Kingston as Eddie Kingston until we interviewed him. Ah, at a Chikara show. Huh? Are you sure that's not this guy? No, we're pretty sure. I think he's taller. Okay. Anyways, back to the and show. The only I know is Conan, Santana, and Ortiz. I don't know which one is Santana and which one is Ortiz because now, the Santana or, never made that clear. Santana or it doesn't matter. Uh, Santana and Ortiz. Um, uh, they I I saw them well before they were LAX here in IWC, and they were they were like Ivo they're, or something. They're a good tag team. They're, though they're a very good tag team. I saw, I saw them at Impact versus Lucha mm-hmm. against Mac and Killshot. Oof. Hot damn, Alakazam. That was a great match. Um, the match that was on Impact These this week. These are the week best responses. Was, was not a good match. No, no, exactly. It was, um, it was against Matt Seidel and, um, oh, can't think of him. I can't think of his name. He's a friend of the show, too, and I can't think of his name. What? Uh, it was it was Matt Seidel. Who's Matt Seidel's tag team partner in Impact? I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Now, Alex, you'll be able to tell us in the chat room. But yeah, it, it was it was a very mediocre match. Also, I don't like how Impact is shot. Okay. Oh, oh God, that ring looks teeny tiny. Oof. Like that ring looks like the size of an iPad. Where were they this week? Were they up New in the York. They're in New York. These were their new. These were their New York tapings. Okay. Yeah, and um, and a lot of the their. They have final hour next week, which is apparently a specialty show. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of Killer Cross promos, who to me just sounds like Bray Wyatt if he was infused with Hugo Strange from Batman. I've been noticing, um, because of where I'm at, I was where the new Rabbit Tribe debuts, and which I believe that is him as a white rabbit, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. some really... Oh, yeah. there- there's some really rough, um, like from Matt uh, Matt Stryker saying this guy looks very cross. I was like, ah, oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alex was saying it's it's Ethan, uh, Ethan Page. Page. Ethan Page, not a friend of the show, but a friend of Bobby and toy collecting apparently. Okay. Um, but yeah, like it, it was an okay match. Like I expected more from Matt Seidel personally. Mm. Like, uh, and just because I've seen him have really good matches, and it was just very by the numbers. Um. But yeah, Taya and Tessa was good until again a DQ finish, which you know it's impact. Um, the the best thing on the show was Mac versus Swan because it's Willie Mac. Uh, Johnny Johnny just had a promo on the show saying, "I don't understand what Killer Cross's deal is, man." I'm like, "Yeah, neither do I." <laughs> 
because Killer Cross just says a lot of words. And he's talking about like nuclear bombs and shit. And I'm like, all right, bro. Like, I, I get it. You're a <laughs> clockwork orange or something. I get right, it. Right, right, right. So, so. Oh, oh, hold on. There was Pentagon versus Homicide. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was the main event. Uh, that was fun. That was fun. I mean, it's all, it's, it's Pentagon. I'm gonna, I'm gonna love a Pentagon match. Homicide can still, you know, do homicide things. I should. <laughs> homicide, oh, homicide. That is, that is terrible phrasing, but that's his own fault. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Hey, man, it was the two thousands. But then, um, Penta and Phoenix got beat down by the OGs. So I'm like, oh, great. It just, if if they were trying to bring me in didn't work they even had joseph park in a backstage segment and oh he looks rough like like dude you should have fought the undertaker five years ago oh i think like, isn't abyss gonna, gonna, i think abyss is doing the uh is is going into the uh, hall of fame alex i've seen killer cross in the ring i like killer cross in the ring but his promos are way too wordy and difficult to follow if you're just <laughs> tuning in for one episode. All right. Well, anyways, so that's that's the impact. Uh, what, what about you, uh, uh, Larry? Are you are you you going to give impact a shot? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy, Larry, Larry? Just just go to Lucha. I'm I'm kicking myself right now because while we were watching Raw, I could have been watching the New Japan Wrestle Kingdom press conference. <laughs> Isn't that mostly in Japanese? It's entirely in Japanese, oh, but it no. would have been way more entertaining than the shit we just watched earlier oh, tonight. Oh man, <laughs> we, are, we are recording this on Monday night, Larry, of course. Larry, just watch, force Sword to watch Lucha. Just watch it with him. Sorg, you should watch Lucha. You've seen how busy I was every time you came in today, right? I, you had time I'm to just, put SmackDown I'm, on. I'm I, yeah, you know, but I, I want to pay one. attention to Lucha. I mean, I want to give it to due time. I've been there. watching. Mike, I've been watching Lucha, Lucha on the slide. So Okay. To cool. get it in. Because if you're listening to this after you voted, tomorrow night is Ultima Lucha Parte Dos. Oh, time's the time we wind me now. All right, back into the uh, the back into the uh, the uh, Tardis for a moment. Let's give a shout out. Uh, check out what's going over on Indie Wrestling uh, dot Network www dot Indie Wrestling dot Network because domains are a bitch. Um, but uh, we just added a whole bunch of content, including Duke and Doe's hardcore memories. And if you go check out the Indie Wrestling dot US YouTube and Facebook page, there's extra special content that we put out there. Because, guys, Shirley Doe reviewed Marvel Universe Live. So, oh. Yes. That is about Did he say you got put over? Yeah, he, well, yes, he definitely reviewed it like a wrestling show. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm please. I'm excited. I'm excited. I, w- I want to hear who had the heel heat. I want to hear if Doctor Strange had his shine. Like, I... I want to know all. There was there was a bit of it. There there was a bit of it. It was it was really fun. So go check that out. Um, did, did go group make the baby face come back. <laughs> okay, maybe not to that extent, but it was still pretty good. Go check that out. It's over there, and of course that is a part a part that we took out of the uh, episode seven of Duke and Doe's uh, Hardcore Memories, where we talked about amongst other things fan interactions, like uh, when nine one one and Sabu would interact with fans, particularly. Um, as well as uh, Shirley Doe's markout moment with Sabu that did not go very well. <laughs> yeah, and um, and uh, they also talked about um the early internet, like the late '90s in ECW, and what it was like when you took everybody from a Usenet group, did something called Cyber Slam, and then had a press conference with all those people from the Usenet group that were ECW fans. You can imagine the results. It's like you know before everybody had a podcast. Uh, but, uh, go check that out as well as new content from black diamond wrestling. Um, the pro wrestling Ohio early years, volume four of the TV show is up there, including Johnny, uh, Johnny Gargano, including Dolan, Colin Delaney at, back in the days of the Olsen twins before he even popped up on WWF dude or ECW, I guess. Right. Um, and so much more. Plus all the old rise content, motorweight wrestling, legend of Virgil and his, uh, and his, uh, Merchandise, traveling er, merchandise, travel uh, the, the table, Montreal theory, all included. Free trial starting today. www.indywrestling.com. 
us. And there's some new shows coming that will be exclusive. You will not be able to watch them anywhere else but on the network in the next couple months. So uh, the more information on that will be upcoming uh, here in the area. And so much more. We're working on a lot on the background. Go check out another releases over at IndieWrestling.us. All right. So um, I, this is kind of like a big question-ish. I thought it'd be fun to, you know, Mike, I know you have like a lot of history up there with like early Poughkeepsie Raws and everything. And, you know, we got some interesting, you know, I, I don't know. I wanted to share some old time wrestling history over here as well. I We were talking like, like, I was going old school with somebody. I don't know somebody we had on Indie Mayhem about like, you know, how they got into wrestling when they were like five and stuff like that. They got me thinking about stuff like that. And I know we talk about certain things from time to time here on the show. Um, so, you know, that'd be something different uh, for this kind of special, um, what was it, 641 and a half episode of Wrestling Mayhem Show. Um, so, Mike, I you know, was there anything that like we've never brought up on the show, like some experiences you have? Like we've always talked about like how we can see you in the crowd and those early Raws and Poughkeepsie and everything, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think like – I know I've told a lot of different stories about like my early memories of wrestling and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if I ever, I'm sure I probably mentioned it like over 200 episodes ago or something like that, but I have a really fun Owen Hart story. Mm -hmm. I don't believe this was on a raw. I think this just might've been just on a house show, but it was um, Owen Hart and the bulldog against Bret Hart and maybe Sean. I'm not sure. This was back in the day when Owen and Bulldog were teaming, and it was maybe maybe it was Razor. I'm not sure. I don't remember who it was. But um, my sister back in the day was a huge Bret Hart fan, like huge, like wore pink and black to all the shows, desperately wanted Bret's glasses every single time, like huge, huge fan. And we were sitting maybe second or third row. And there was a point in the match where Owen had just uh, tagged out and he was just standing on the apron. It, like, there was some kind of wrestle. There was something happening. And the arena is as quiet as it can be because it's not time for, like, the comeback to happen yet. So my sister, as loud as her little voice can carry, she just screamed, You stink, going heart! Like, the loudest that she could possibly manage. And Owen whips his head around. He's like, who said that? Because he heard it very clearly. He sees my eight-year-old sister in full Bret Hart regalia, like the old school large pink and black Bret head shirt and all that stuff. And he, just, he just looks at her and gets a big shit-eating grin on his face and just goes, shh. And we all just cracked the hell up. Like, just immediately lost our shit. And that, that, that was, that's one of my first, like, real memories from live wrestling. Like that, that it just always has stuck with me. I'm like, and I, I, that's why I'm an Owen Hart guy. Mm-hmm. You know, never a Bret Hart guy. <laughs> that's why. Cause like you can tell Owen's a good dude. Yeah. Deep down, no matter what. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and you hear a lot of those stories from him too. Well, Larry, I know, oh. I know we kind of dropped you into this. I didn't know like how, I don't think we, have we ever talked about how, how far back wrestling goes for you? Um, I didn't start going to live shows till I moved to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I would. So like everything was just like watching like Raw and SmackDown. Mm-hmm. You know, even pay pay per views. I'd get recaps from pay per views on Raw. You know, but um, I don't know. Larry, do you remember the first thing of wrestling you saw? Oh, because I, I don't know. It that's to, what we ask every indie wrestler. It would it would have been one of the <laughs> uh, one of the Austin angles. Wow! Like when he was fucking with like bringing all the vehicles out. I can't, like I can't remember the I can't remember the earliest one. Okay. Um I'm trying to think. Yeah, I can't I can't, I really can't remember the the first one. So it was I probably, would... it was probably the beer truck. Maybe the beer truck was or the Zamboni one that... or something. Yeah. Well the Zamboni came after that. No, yeah, it, was either, was it was either it was either it was either the beer truck. I can't remember if it was the beer truck or if it was one he was uh it when uh he messed up the Corvette. I really can't remember. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I don't know, I I can't I really can't recall. I know the most vivid memories I have was like during the like when Eddie was on top and like during his whole like push, 
like when they were doing like Los Guerreros and stuff. That's that was like Those the most the memorable. Days. Those are the time, good days uh, when I was younger. It's like today, well, how SmackDown's good now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and he's still responsible for one of the best matches I've ever seen live at a house show. Mm. Which one was that? Like, uh, it was when Eddie was champ, and they had a SmackDown house show in Poughkeepsie. It was supposed to be just like a normal tag match, like as the main event, and you know it would have been fun. It was supposed to be like Eddie and Ray versus I don't even fucking remember who else. But the card got changed. I never figured out why. But we got to see, for the WWE Undisputed title, Eddie Guerrero versus The Undertaker in a street fight. Oh, jeez. Wow. Oh, jeez. Yeah. It was fucking dope. <laughs> it was great. Because it was like big evil Undertaker, too. Yeah. It was, it was booger red. Like, yeah. it was real good. That's amazing. It was real, real good. That was like the best card and subject to change I've ever seen. Well, you know, with this question, I was starting to think back because I don't have a lot of like live experiences. You know, yeah. I, I didn't get to see anything until like '99 when like a friend I was just talking the other day about like I think this was like I, I feel like I might have been the only guy that was like nice to this kid in school, and uh, this was like probably senior year, junior year maybe of uh, when I went to a new school, and he like he's just like hey come to the wrestling show with me, and that was the 1999 uh, house show in um in uh down here in civic arena mm. and you know traveling from greenville like you know an hour and a half for the show and back and everything with his family that i've never met before yeah. <laughs> he's never really hung with this guy and just like come to a wrestling show with me i'm like yeah okay um <laughs> but i was trying to think back like kind of other weird kind of influences in school and i and i started thinking back to like around the fourth grade we had this like long playground and it was weird because everything was made out of like tires or something, which was really bad because then the bees all lived in them. But like at the far end of this playground, like for recess, there were those like kind of parallel bars. You know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about? Like, yeah. like, 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 so there's those and maybe some like tire jumps on the other side or something. And those were our tag ropes. Like those were our tag corners. Jeez, that's nice. rough. And we, yeah. oh and we God. would, we were, I don't need, I can't, and I'm trying, I'm trying to think for the life of me, like, how we did wrestling like and even <laughs> which of my classmates were involved with it in the long run right yeah so like you know we were play fighting or whatever you know putting holds on each other and stuff until one of the um until one of the uh uh, uh you know what do you call them chaperones teachers whatever like like noticed something was happening at the far end of the playground and come over and and, and break us up right so, but I mean, it was nothing like nobody ever got hurt or anything. We we were just you know fucking around with it. Um, also, I I think I think wrestling is involved with my first ever fight in school because I was getting picked on. I had so it was un, it was an unfortunate time in WWF, mostly because Lex Luger was there. Um, <laughs> and I got religiously I had for several years WWF magazine. Yeah. And one of the covers, also this is around the WBF years. So one of the covers is just like Lex Luger doing a pose. So mm-hmm. like it's one of those like, you know, probably most like, you know, it was like just like a bulky good dude on the front of a cover, right? Yeah. So and I'm like, you know, probably from the narcissist phase, right? It probably probably like this, like Yeah, yeah. He definitely wasn't red, white, and blue or anything at that time and and everything. So like I would always bring the magazines with me in my book bag and stuff and read on the bus and stuff. And I get picked on for them and everything, right? Um, you know, get called names for having like a magazine with a half naked guy on the front of it. Lex Luger, you know, which was enough of and an it was probably by football players who Touch each other's butts. Oh, you think we had football at my school? <laughs> we didn't have football. Probably a wrestler though. Probably an amateur wrestler though. Uh, high school wrestler. But no, no, no. This is all elementary school. Okay. Um, so like, uh, they were they were my, like one of them grabbed one of my magazines and ripped it. So I like hit him with the magazine, and this other kid who was actually, I think he was kind of my best friend at the time, was fucking with me too, and I ended up punching him in the face. <laughs> And that was the first time I got detention because of wrestling. So, but Sorry, I, gave I him a stunner. A What's that? <laughs> was that Mike? Oh no, I, I was gonna say I thought for a second like someone would have hit you and you would have just gone you. <laughs> that would have been great, wouldn't it? No, it was just a reaction shot. So, <laughs> um, th- th- that's how that's how wrestling made me cause my first violent act on another human being. So, yeah. Um, 
So that was fun. Uh, then I had like bus detention or whatever the fuck they give you in fifth grade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, like those are those are kind of my my early memories of that kind of stuff. Um, other than and, like cousin had all the LGN figures and I'd go over and play with that. Like we had the ring and everything. This also so this kid also had like the battle cruiser for GI Joe. He was he was doing okay. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, good shit uh but i don't know um let's see we got uh, alex miller in the chat room here hanging out with us he says one of my first memories uh is he got a pick of jericho benoit guerrero mysterio like two months before the eddie passed wow that had been tough so that's pretty nuts oh boy um and did i see zach zaber jr and that was ring of honor i think he popped up on here in pittsburgh hey guys ring of honor was here in pittsburgh <laughs> and i hear it was a very good show mike so i would recommend keep an eye out for that when that gets going on tv i think in december it's going to pop up a lot of friends of the show popped up on there well I, I i won't be able to see it i don't get that here oh you gotta fight tv you're fine you're fine I mike i watch enough wrestling on computer screens you know what maybe you'll end up having to watch it one day anyways that's, <clears> the, <throat> that's potentially true uh yes yes uh well i just want to give a quick shout our friend slice on broadway at the comic book pit and of course occupy pro wrestling i know we're doing kind of a shortened show here so i just want to give everybody just a general shout out there um that you go check them out occupy pro wrestling did a great thing this last month with their merchandise and breast cancer awareness um and uh you can check out what the what's going on over there i know he is uh reworking some stuff over on the page i got an email this week about that uh so look for some uh, new content and some new stuff going over going on over there and please also check out the merchandise at whatamaneuver.net also the wrestling mayhem show uh merchandise at whatamaneuver as well uh carrying some stuff over there um and of course slice on broadway slice on broadway.com supporting uh pepperoni the perfect pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni pizza oh it's after midnight that's not happening easily <laughs> so so that's on this you're not eating pizza sort that's exactly right we're not we're not and oh, i'm not gonna get mine tomorrow man um so with that note the sh- pepperoni pizza for when you're peppering the poles on uh, uh you ran out of peas uh but anyways on the shortened show i want to know mad mike larry what did you learn from pro wrestling this week um i i learned something i relearned something sorg that um a man by the name of ted DiBiase taught me a long time ago everybody's got a price everybody's gonna pay because the million dollar man always gets his way <laughs> What is that in reference to? I don't know. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair right. enough. You should just apply it to I life. I appreciate it. Apply it to life, it. right, Larry? Yeah. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, God. Should we go positive or negative? I, whatever you want to do, man. I don't like Leo Rush. That's what I, I learned that. <laughs> um, and Drew McIntyre's a stud. <laughs> <laughs> that dude is a badass. Wow. All right. Okay. That's, Hunters has there you go. <laughs> like that that dude should be holding the universal title right now. Oh, absolutely. He should have won that in <laughs> Sorry. not Brock Lesnar. McIntyre is really tall too. I think Larry has a type. Oh. Oh. Oh mm-hmm. those those tall with long hair folks. Mm-hmm. 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 I see where you're going. <laughs> Picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. Uh, I learned that nothing makes a wrestling match without uh, uh, better than putting putting a person in a pig suit on the line. That is a friend of the show, Dylan Bostic, if you guys are on the visuals with us. And he lost a match to Andrew Palace and had to put on a porky pig suit. Uh, they call him porky pig. but um, Also, there was a birthday for uh, Danny that is in training with IWC, who happens to be a Heyman girl. And uh, and he came out to try to interrupt, and he has chocolate, uh, chocolate cake for his oh. face. This is how so, they do in Clearfield, guys. But no, so that was kind of fun. I learned something positive, too. Oh, okay. I learned something positive, too. I forgot. Because um, Halloween has happened since our last show. Yes. Um, I learned that oh, oh, wrestlers know how to do Halloween. <laughs> um, 
The new if day. The new day as the brood was pretty amazing. Yeah, but but that was that was on television. I'm mm-hmm. talking about stuff that wasn't televised. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see what Rhea Ripley dressed as for Halloween? Mm-hmm. Rhea Ripley dressed as Tegan Knox. Oh, with the with the with the injury with with the crutch and a shirt that says "Shiniest Wizard." Next level trolling. Mm-hmm. Uh, amazing. Uh, uh, also, for, for Larry, is, Knox was uh, got injured at the May Young Classic mm. and was in her uh, match with Rhea Ripley. Yes, gotcha. yes. And um, also, <laughs> there was an NXT Halloween Battle Royal. No, <laughs> that you can see clips of on WWE.com. And I don't want to spoil everything for you, but Cassius Ono is a T Rex. Shit, that was TV. No, no, it was at a house show. No, it was at a house show, but they recorded it. And all right, fuck it. I'm just gonna spoil the best part. Um, EC3 and Drake Maverick are Batman and Robin. I think I said this on Tuesday's show, but now there's actual video of it on WWE.com. Which one is Batman? Amazing as you want it to be. Which one's Batman? He says. Who the fuck do you think is Batman? Drake is Batman, as it should e- be. No, EC goddamn motherfucking three is Batman. <laughs> um, I saw, I had an encounter with a T-Rex. Derek Bateman, you drop the E, and it's Derek Batman. He's not wrong. <laughs> um, I had an encounter with a T-Rex where the mad scientist, uh, Ryan Dye, who we, uh, there's an interview should be popping up in, I think, this week on Indie Mayhem Show. Um, drank something. Well, he was trying to spit in people's face from a vial that he brings out. He's a mad professor. Um, drank it because he got hit or something. Yelled, it's inside me. Ran out the curtain. And then a T-Rex with his jacket came on and terrorized people for a while. Sorg? Yes. Sorg. Life finds a way. If life finds a way, indeed. Especially <laughs> in pro wrestling. And the Wrestling Mayhem Show finds a way to make sure you have your mayhem <laughs> fillings on this election day when we got busy here. Also, Brandon learned that the Young Bucks and the Rhodes play a lot of Super Mario Brothers with their Halloween costumes. Yeah, there was, uh, what was it, the, the Mario's versus uh, Yoshi or something like that. Uh, so they, I know we were sharing that around. Thanks to Brandon, too. So, oh, and, and, Alex, and Alex learned that there's a crazy spot in Ultima Lucha 4 that he's not going to spoil for Sword. Oh. And, and we know what Triple H likes to listen to because of takeover themes. Oh, yeah, that's his iPod. That's his workout iPod for sure. It definitely is. Yes. Also, he still has an iPod. Uh, <laughs> Mad Mike 483 on the Twitters. You guys, Wednesday, Ultimo Lucha Quattro Parte Dos. Go to At Mayhem Show. Look for the hashtag MM for whenever I get a chance to live tweet it because holy shit, it is going to be a baseball. I think he's excited. So you yeah. like, you like, Lucha Underground Mike. I am a fan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right, Larry. Darkforgestudios.co. Yep. To find out what he does in the basement and when he's not here. Yep. <laughs> that sounded very wrong. Uh you know, I've been working on when people come in and I'm describing how no, we're up here, the 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 other companies in the back, and then there's a guy in the basement that does that does prop work. You know, like, you know, I'm working on that, like, like the pitch to help the rest of you guys out, because I'm usually the one that interfaces with people that walk in here with question marks. So, yes. Sorg's a good receptionist. I, yeah, I, 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 I'm basically the receptionist for like three businesses in this building. So, I mean, whether I'm Sorg. representing them well, I don't know. Sorg, what's your typing speed? It's not enough. That's for sure. <laughs> what is my typing of the dead speed is the question. <laughs> Brandon says this has to be the shortest show ever without missing. <laughs> true. true. That's true. true. Oh, well, <laughs> joke's on you. I was aiming for 30 minutes. Mad Mike, Larry, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, that's joined us on this weird, timey wimey episode of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, we will be back at our 9 p.m. Eastern slot uh, the next Tuesday after Election Day uh, with all the fun there. Please watch out for Indie Mayhem Show. We do have scheduled two uh, interviews. I believe they're at 7 and 8 o'clock or six, or maybe it's 6 or 7. 6 and 7. But we will have Noctis and um, uh, John Roden 
on. Uh, both have interesting stories. Both trainees of the uh, IWC training school, the ICWA uh, training school, I believe, is the right letters. Um, I have to write them a lot now because of matches that happened over the weekend. Uh, but uh, there, there are going to be some good discussions with those guys that have um, um, both transitioned their indie careers here in over the last year or so. Uh, so looking forward to that. Please go check that out. Live streams. Uh, those will be on IndieWrestling.us. Check out everything at IndieWrestling.us. WrestlingMainShow.com. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.